How did you get into this business? The condensed version, grew up on a farm, Illinois. Was messing around on the piano when I was a kid. Didn't like piano lessons. Started writing songs at a young age. Decided I'm gonna go to college. Went to Millican University. Thought I was gonna be big time writer doing jingles in Chicago for mac and cheese commercials. Found out that everybody was much better at than I was. <laughs> they were all much more talented than I was. They were better musicians, better singers. But they had this recording studio, and this would have been 1988, 89. Uh, they had a 24-track MCI recording studio with a two-inch machine. And I took this class called Intro to the Recording Studio. They didn't have any recording classes. It was basically musicians, here's a studio, go do projects, enjoy. I fell in love with it immediately, and I felt a connection with the equipment and the knobs in my ears. And I had a thing in my head that I couldn't explain, but I didn't have a musical skill set to recreate it with an instrument. But when I sat down at the desk is when it happened. And so that that's when I discovered that you can actually do this for a living, it was 1989. And I read my first Mix Magazine article about studios in Chicago, which I didn't even know was a career path. And so then I was like, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. And so that's where it started. And I moved to Nashville in 93 after a short bout at Disney. I spent a year at Disney, hated it, said I'm gonna go farm. Went back to farming, uh, got a call that year from a guy at Opryland who was a friend of mine in college. He had moved into a management position, offered me the biggest show at the Opryland theme park to mix live. Well, because I had Disney on my resume, yeah. they hired me. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. So when I came to town, I managed to hook up with this guy named Brett Teagarden. Uh, took an internship with him. He introduced me to a bunch of people. But at the time, life got in the way. My dad passed away. My mom got cancer. There was a lot of family stuff I needed to help out with. I needed to make money. I didn't have any help. I wasn't making any money to operate land. And I got offered this road gig with this artist named Laurie White. Our very first gig was with George Strait out on a stadium tour. And I, for the next 13 years, toured and mixed front of house for every country artist you can think of. That whole time I had the dream of doing this. And so I was building little ADAT studios for my buddies so I could have that had money to build a studio. And then I would offer to go work at that studio for free. And then I got in it through an artist I worked with. His name was James Bonamy. He hooked me up with another studio. And so I would go in and work in my off time when I was in town, but I figured out really fast that I couldn't be on the road and pursue this career. And so finally, uh, when I met my wife, we were dating and we were deciding we are gonna get married. Uh, I was at the age of 32, we got married when I was 34. Um, we decided that it was time for me to go for it. And so I got off the road. For the first three years, I worked about four different jobs. I worked at a mastering studio, I worked at another studio cutting vocals, um, I uh, was touring, I was weekend warrior and you might call it. And then yeah. I was also teaching at SAE. I was teaching audio acoustics and things like that. And through working all those crazy hours, I found my way to this job and the place I was cutting vocals, I was meeting every hit producer and hit songwriter in Nashville at the time. And I just used it as a relationship builder. And eventually that gave me the opportunity to step away from that studio and go, freelance at the age of 34 and that's where it started to go for me i didn't have my first hit until i was 41 or 42 and i had back-to-back -back number ones wow so it was crazy that's and we so got cool. we got two grammy nominations on that record and that sort of just accelerated things for me and then i changed my business model after that when so, did, when did you move things into the house so i've been doing that for a long time. So we've been here nine years. We were at our other house 10 years. Um, I've been doing that all along. Um, I had one commercial space that I had a B room that I had built out for the owners. Um, we had a deal where I would build the room out. They would pay for the build out and I would put all the gear in and then it would be my mix room. Nice. As soon as I finished the build out, they kicked me out oh, and first. they rented it to someone. Yeah. And so a competitor of them, of theirs, asked me to come and work at his studio to cut vocals. And I met a whole crew of people at that studio that sort of introduced me to 
clients I still work with today. And, um, and at that point, I was like, I think I, well, I had a couple of ADATs and I decided to build my first PC and I put, I got, I built a Cubase rig, which became a new window rig. And then I saved up and I bought a 24 track radar machine that I could take Whoa. with me. Yeah. And so that was what I tracked on for a long time, but I completed most of my mixes from that point on in new window in the beginning. And then I moved to pro tools. Oh golly. Five, six years after that. Um, it was literally economics. Yeah. I just didn't, I didn't have the money for the, the digit design stuff at the time. Yeah. And I was just, I mean, can't, you know, you do tons of free work. Yeah. You know, I, in for years and years and years. And that's how I got here eventually. I mean, it was just stair steps the whole way. And, and now I'm fortunate enough that my calendar stays pretty much booked three to four months out. And, um, and, and it's absolutely amazing because anytime I start to get a little poor me, I remember those yeah. days. And, and I, and I literally get a smile on my face. I'm like, I'm actually doing this. Yeah. I'm 52 and life is good.